Go. Okay. A universal health care system in America. Why I think it should be a constitutional amendment. The Declaration of Independence states that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The preamble to the U.S. Constitution starts off, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States. The U.S. government bases all their legal decisions on their interpretation of the Constitution and what they deem the Founding Fathers had envisioned. The Constitution is the supreme law of the United States. The architects of the Constitution know that things change, and that is why they made allowances for amendments to be added to the Constitution for future generations. The Constitution was enacted to protect the citizens of the U.S., promote general welfare, and ensure domestic tranquility. The Founding Fathers had stated prior to this in the Declaration of Independence that all men are endowed with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When deciding on any new amendment or law, our government measures it against what our Founding Fathers envisioned when they wrote the Constitution. At the time of the, US, of the ratification of the U.S. Constitution, the American health care system was very different than it is now. The mortality rate was so much higher at that time. There were no antibiotics to fight infection. There were no vaccinations against disease and death from disease was commonplace. The country doctor in colonial America was paid by barter system or a nominal fee. Medicine is now a big business based on the highest profit. Its primary purpose is no longer to heal, but rather to facilitate the biggest profit for doctors, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, and health insurance companies. According to the Institute of Medicine at the National Academies of Science, the U.S. is the only major industrialized nation in the world lacking in universal health care access. In 2006, 47 million people in the U.S., that's 15.8% of the population, were without health insurance for at least part of the year, according to Wikipedia. Most Americans receive coverage through their employer. That's 59%. 9% of the population purchase health insurance directly from the market. Government, government sources cover 27%. More than four out of five of the uninsured are from working families. These facts are taken from the Kaiser Family Network, their paper on the uninsured in America. Now, opponents to a national health care plan point to other countries' problems with their system. Canada's publicly financed health care system is fraught with long waits, sometimes years for certain procedures, as reported as recently as 2006 in the New York Times. While the European nations offer a mixed public and private insurance and delivery system, this means you can either use the government insurance or you can pay out of pocket for care. In England, this has caused a shortage of dentists in the National Health Service. These dentists are switching to private treatment because of inadequate payment by the government for their services, as reported by MSNBC. Opponents also point to the benefits of a, a for-profit competitive health care system. They say competition creates better health care choices for the American public. But if half of the American public cannot afford that medical care, what is the point? They also say that most people get their insurance from their jobs. 
but with rising insurance costs, employers are cutting insurance benefits and in some cases completely doing without it. These opponents also claim that the inflated co 